Like in the boondocks, they make sure you get the point, but it doesn't matter if it's a bit unrealistic because they want you to understand what is going on, okay? You'll understand what is going on in the boondocks a lot better than any of Kenya Barris's work, okay? I said it, I said it, I said it, and I non-black people can watch it okay like there's a lot of shows out here that's meant for white people and you see black people watching them all the time like there's black people that watch friends for some reason knowing that show ain't meant for us but they still watch it started doing the stupid Sunday dinner thing because you saw soul food on cable. We're gonna pause this for the benefit of all y'all who never saw soul food. Soul food is a movie about a big humongous black grandmother, aptly named Big Mama. Big Mama demonstrates her love by feeding herself and her offspring enormous amounts of pig lard. Then, get this, Big Mama's arteries are so clogged they gotta amputate her arm. It was her leg! Right, okay, whatever, leg. Then, she dies of a heart attack. <laughs> or another stroke, or something. God called her home. And what does the family do after she dies? They get together for a Sunday dinner and eat the same food that just killed Big Mom. The same food! They didn't learn a lesson. Nobody went on a diet, and that's the end of the movie. Cricket? Y'all kind of cricket today. Mm, I don't feel like fixing y'all. Hey y'all, it's Harry Anna and I'm back with another video. Welcome to or welcome back to The Pirate Ship, also known as Harry Hook's Pirate Ship. Always remember, I'm the captain and I have no first mate. Okay, that's it. That's there. You're on my pirate ship. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Harry Anna. I like to make content based off nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. If I look busted today, it's because I am. I'm breaking out like freaking crazy. I had a really, really bad eczema flare up. I'm bloated AF. Like, I'm really stressed out right now, okay? I don't know if it's obvious or not, but I work a day job for you. For those of you guys who don't know, it is really stressing me out and I'm just, I'm not good. I'm itchy, I'm tired, but I like making content. I love being a content creator. So I was like, you know what, push through and put out some great content. So today I decided that I want to join on the Drag the Kenya Bears bandwagon because, duh, hold on, like, let me pull this up. Mm -mm. You know, with my takes, the hairy on away. So we are going to be t discussing two black shows with two very different styles created by two very different people. Two very different black people, I'll say that, because them being black really has a lot to do with these shows. Now, the reason I decided to compare do these two shows is because they both do the same thing, if that makes sense. While one does it very, very good, and one does it mid to poorly. And I will explain that to you guys. I will explain that to you guys. Now, the Boondocks, love it, okay? The show got issues. We'll talk about it another time, okay? The show has issues that I have touched on in the past and I will touch on more in the future. But for the most part, we're just going to be praising it today. We can critique it another time, okay? The Boondocks holds a special place in my heart as it was my first adult cartoon. And the main reason it was my first adult cartoon is because it was a cartoon about black people made by black people, okay? Like when I was young, I even knew the, the Cleveland show was white people made, okay? I knew that was not a black series. I just realized that I left my television on. I don't feel like getting up and stopping the video to turn it off, so it's just gonna stay on. If you guys see changes in the back, I'm sorry. Just look at the hat instead. Mm. Now, I knew better. We'll begin with this. We will be discussing the white gaze today. And when I say the white gaze, I am spelling it G-A-Z-E. I know it sounds like something else, but we're talking about the white gaze. Now, what exactly is the white gaze, you may ask? The exact definition that comes up when you put it up on Wikipedia is... The white gaze is the assumption that the default reader or observer is coming from a perspective of someone who identifies as white or that the person sometimes feels need to take into account that the white... Let me run it back. 
person of color sometimes feel the need to account the white reader or observer's reaction. So basically to sum it up, it means that you make your work appeal to white people. Okay. Now, one of these shows appeals to white people. The other one does not. So let's begin. What exactly is Blackish? Not gonna lie, I was a big fan of this series when I was in high school, and then I smelled the um doo doo when I got to college and realized that it was trash. Okay, so Blackish is a sitcom that is still going on for some reason about a black family named the Johnson family, one of the most common black names out here. Anyway, they are a well-off middle-class family living in Los Angeles that deal with white people all the time. The Johnson family is also light-skinned. That is something important to know because Kenya Barris has a big colorism problem within his works. The Boondocks is a show about another black family named the Freeman family who live in the Illinois suburbs, okay? They also deal with white people all the time. Now, the Freeman family is brown skin, so I thought it was very important to note that, okay? So, while both of these shows are a bit similar, like being about black people dealing with white people in their neighborhoods, issues within the black community, numerous celebrity guest appearances and whatnot, one works way better than the other ever will, okay? And y'all know which one I'm talking about because the show is still going on. The Boondocks little 45 episodes, I don't count them last 10, no are way better when it comes to African-American representation and realism than Blackish ever will be in the 100 plus episodes that they have, okay? So, one works way better than the other will because of the white gaze, okay? From the beginning, the Boondocks was never meant to appeal to white people. The Boondocks is created by Aaron McGregor, starting off as a comic strip that was about black culture, black issues, and politics, okay? He did not hold back from what he said in this comic strip. I am a fan of the comic strips. I low-key kind of enjoy the comic strips a little bit more than the show because the show can be ir The show got a lot of issues, okay? But we're gonna get there another day. Now, with the Boondocks, it was not easy at all for them to get this show made because it kept getting turned down because, you know, it was a little too, you know, if you've seen the Boondocks, you would understand why it kept getting turned down, okay? Which is why it's on Adult Swim. It was too much to be aired during daytime, okay? So, Blackish does what the Boondocks does, you know, being about black culture, issues within the black community, and politics but in a very watered down and corny way. Like, Blackish just feels like black, kinda black, modern family, we're gonna be real, okay? It's not even comparable to the Boondocks it, that much, all that much, okay? With Blackish, they get their points across in a very watered down and corny way, which leads them into missing the point or not getting the point across correctly, which leaves you very confused. And this also is a big issue in a lot of other Kenya Barris' work too, including Grownish and Blackish. And I never even m made it past the pilot of Black AF. That's how bad it is. They want to talk about a certain issue and then they're kind of there, but not all the way. And it just leaves the reader way more confused. Like, how are you going to talk about colorism with a light skin girl? That's just something that episode really bothered me. Anyway, so this is why I stopped watching Blackish in the first place because the points that they would try to get across would leave the viewers confused as hell. As somebody that is like me, is pretty woke for the most part, I would get it, but other people that aren't too in to know about what is going on would be lost. And that is not great, okay? One thing as a writer is that if people are not understanding the point you were trying to get across, you gotta go back in the writing room and fix it, okay? And Blackish seems to always miss the point. They see that people don't get it and they don't care and they just move on and do something else. No, ma'am, okay? So, this is why I stopped watching Blackish in the first place. Like, so much about this show just don't work. It just doesn't work. They try to be woke and aware of things. And to be honest, this is just like an issue with all of Kenya Barris' shows. Like, they attempt to tackle issues then fail because right when they get there they just stop or they do it in a very unsettling way 
to the point where it just feels forced and like the actors don't even be looking like they're acting no they look like they're acting it doesn't come off across as natural it's like they're reciting lines it's like they aren't really into what they are saying it's just like they're not even getting it either it's like okay they're like forcing them to say oh my gosh racism is bad okay but like go into a little bit more detail about why like it just doesn't come off across as natural if that makes sense like with the boondocks though okay with the boondocks they over exaggerate everything okay everything in the boondocks is over exaggerated like in the boondocks they make sure you get the point but it doesn't matter if it's a bit unrealistic because they want you to understand what is going on okay you'll understand what is going on in the boondocks a lot better than any of kenya barris's work okay i said it i said it i said it and i've noticed this that we're in this age of where like social media plays like a big part into what we see on television and i think that is part to blame for why the boondock season four was just so ass okay like uh, -uh it was unacceptable okay it's freaking unacceptable because the first three seasons of the boondocks social media wasn't really popping like that like yeah myspace was the thing facebook was the thing twitter was just now becoming a thing but social media didn't really impact the boondocks as it does any of kenya barris's work simply because it just wasn't there and then you know the last season oh that season was so bad like y'all i don't even want to get into that it's so trash it's so freaking trash okay like uh-uh so like i said we're in this age where social media plays a big part into what we see on TV and that Kenya Barris throws all of like these Twitter discussion type things into his work. But it's in a watered down way, like not to upset white people, if that makes sense. At least not to upset them too much. Okay, like Kenya Barris makes black shows for everyone and that's where we go wrong that is exactly where we go wrong it is very off-putting like it's so frustrating it's just really really frustrating and no i don't want anybody to assume that this is how i feel no i am not saying that non-black people cannot watch the boondocks okay because they can everyone can watch everything just because you are not a black person does not mean that you can't watch the show because i saw this ongoing discussion talking about are black are no black people allowed to watch the boondocks and i'm like yes you are i really think it's a bit of a microaggression if you feel like you're not black and you can't watch this show like this non-black people can watch it okay like there's a lot of shows out here that's meant for white people and you see black people watching them all the time like there's black people that watch friends for some reason no and that show ain't meant for us but they still watch it mm -hmm. yes that was friends shade i'm sorry y'all i just really can't stand friends friends is what is on in the background when i'm trying to get work done because i know i'm not gonna look up at the screen anyway let's get back on topic kenya barris makes black shows for everybody and it's very off-putting because like i said no i am not saying that if you're not black you can't watch the boondocks but no piece of media is limited to one group of people like that's saying that women can't like shonen anime and that adults can't watch kids shows okay and that's saying straight people can't watch lgbtq media and whatnot so the boondocks knows exactly what its intended audience is and that's black people black african-american people to be specific okay because the boondocks focuses on the african-american experience not like the worldwide black experience okay so its intended audience is black people specifically african-american people and they use the n-word a lot okay they use the n-word that ends with a a lot out of respect of my father he asked me not to say the n-word in this video because yeah you know how old black parents are about that word okay he out of respect to my dad i decided not to say the word okay so the boondocks just lets you know who the show is made for and that it's not for everybody okay because blackish appeals to white people more than the boondocks ever will okay that's just the truth okay that's just facts right there more people white people 
non-black people in general are gonna gravitate more towards blackish than they do the boondock simply because it's not in your face about a lot of the issues within the black community it also just has to do with a lot of them just kind of not getting the humor and not understanding what is happening in the boondocks because i know like a lot of non-black people said that they just un didn't understand the boondocks and that's just simply because they don't know the black experience so anyway like I said, blackish appeals to more white people and just non-black people than the boondocks ever will. And it truly has affected the show's outcome, okay? Which is why blackish is way more successful than the boondocks will ever be, okay? The boondocks has this cult following, but when you look at episode numbers and ratings, you know, money-wise, it's way more successful, okay? That's just a fact right there. <laughs> Like, even when Blackish goes there, it still isn't there because they don't go all the way. The Boondocks, when they go there, they go there and then some. And honestly, they go too far to where they over-exaggerate every last little thing. But one thing about the Boondocks, though, is that they're going to make sure you understood what the freak is going on. Okay? Okay. Blackish just don't care. They're like, oh, you didn't get it? Oh, well, move on to the next one. Like, no, that's not good writing, Kenya. Kenya Barris, come on. No, 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 no. So, whew, back on topic. The Boondocks is not afraid to say how they feel about the things within the black community, such as calling out BET for being trash, or how streets and other things are named after Martin Luther King Jr. are terrible in condition, and how the black community has very unhealthy eating habits, okay? I am so glad that they touched on that one right there, because that is a big elephant in the room within the black community that barely anybody wants to acknowledge, that our community has trash eating habits, and we gotta do better. We have to do better okay and to be honest like I had mentioned that it it was hard for them to get the boondocks made as it kept getting turned down and then they finally got Adult Swim to like you know be there for them it was a lot easier to get blackish made okay like you are able to catch reruns during the day all the freaking time of blackish like one day when we ain't had no cable one day and we had to use the little satellite we had to watch blackish and i was just irritated i was waiting for it to go off and then the goldbergs come on next yes i like the goldbergs y'all the goldbergs slaps okay can't nobody tell me nothing the goldbergs is white excellence it is it is i freaking adore it okay it has issues, but everything has issues at the end of the day. You are able to catch reruns at the day all the time of Blackish. But when it comes to the Boondocks, you are only able to catch reruns once or twice a week only on Adult Swim. And you know, them episodes only come on at night because Adult Swim is only a nighttime block running from 8 p.m. to like 6 a.m. in the morning okay it's not that long it, it's not that long it used to be shorter in the past but now it's a lot longer like why is the sun still out when adult swim comes on y'all like i remember that adult swim used to not come on until it was pitch black quiet outside okay why is it still loud outside when adult swim comes on that's another topic for another discussion adult swim starts way too early in my opinion i be wanting to watch the amazing world of gumball and then i gotta watch freaking american dad Okay, y'all could at least play Bob's Burgers or at least put King of the Hill back on air. Anyway, anyway, like I said, the Boondocks has significantly less episodes than Blackish. Like I said, the Boondocks only has like 55 episodes, really 45 if you erase the last season. Blackish has 100 plus episodes, okay? More people have seen Blackish, okay? By the way, if you are a non black person, and you've seen Blackish, comment down below. I am genuinely curious. I want to know how many non black people watch Blackish on a regular basis because there's a lot of y'all, okay? I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of y'all. So, as I've said all of this, how more people have seen Blackish, it has way more episodes. Does that mean Blackish is a better show? Hell no. Hell to freaking all. No, it is not a better show at all. The reason Blackish has gone on so long is because it don't make white people uncomfortable. Simple as that. That is literally the reason why Blackish has gone on as long as it has, okay? Because it doesn't make white people as comfortable as the Boondocks did, okay? Okay. 
the boondocks is unapologetically black okay it always has and it always will be it was never intended for the white gaze okay this show is blacker than any of kenya barris's work combined okay literally you know his show black af it's not black AF. The boondocks is black AF, okay? And that is my conclusion, okay? That is part of the reason why I personally think that the boondocks needs to get the love that blackish gets, but we know it's never gonna get that because of the white gaze, okay? It's never gonna get the love and appreciation that it actually deserves. Like, yes, the boondocks may have this cult following. Yes, it gets talked about all the time. Yes, so many people are beginning to watch it over the years and years and years, but the boondocks is not gonna have that much of an impact as blackish does because, like I said, the boondocks makes white people uncomfortable. It Blackish makes white people uncomfortable too to a certain extent, but not as much as the Boondocks does because the Boondocks is just not afraid to go there. But Blackish barely gets there, okay? They like dip their toe in the water and they're like, whoo, that's enough, let's get out. And then you know, the Boondocks goes into the 12 in deep end. Okay, you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. I really enjoyed this comparison. Can you guys please leave a comment down below about how you truly feel about Kenya Barris's work and the impact that it really has on the black community? Because I have so many thoughts and opinions about Kenya Barris's work and it honestly really just frustrates me because it just it's just like this ongoing thing that I've noticed that when somebody gets like a black person, that's what I'm talking about, when a black person gets up in the entertainment industry Industry, they put so much trash out and then it seems like nobody else can get in making it harder for the rest of us to get there but anyway if you guys really like this video please make sure you give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below like it please um subscribe please you know do that algorithm justice so i can quit my day job i love you guys if you guys would like to follow me on everything everything is at harriana if you guys would like to purchase merchandise it is harianahook.com that is where you can purchase all of my merch if you place an order it will be shipped out this week i am so sorry y'all that i am behind on getting your stuff out for y'all it's just like i said i'm trying to quit my day job i'm trying to get my I i'm gonna get there okay i'm gonna get there and if you like this video if you enjoyed me please consider joining my patreon my lowest tier is one dollar my most expensive is five i have a lot to offer over there so yeah thank you guys for watching this video so much i love you guys and yes have a good night Cherishing power, puff two of a kind Both wanna save the world before bad times From towns from Memphis, New York to LA The power of girls are just here to stay They coming through and fighting And everyone they shocking You know no one can stop them